In this video, we show the translation flow from a Cadence SPV tool to ANSYS IcePack using ODB++ version 8. As an example, we'll use a dual inline memory module, or DIM layout, that was created in a Cadence product. To generate ODB++ from a Cadence SPV tool, such as Allegro, ABD, or SIP, go to the File Export menu and select ODB++ inside. Or you can click the ODB Out icon on the toolbar to launch this dialog. Set the archive type to uncompressed. Compressed TGZ files are also supported. Set Remove EDA data to No. Set the export option to Full. Make sure the ODB++ version is set to 8. This option invokes an extra verification step during the translation process, in case you want to see the contents of the board in the ODB++ viewer to confirm that your design has been represented correctly. The ODB++ layer list displays the electrical and mechanical layers for the geometry. The electrical layers in this design include eight metal layers. Dielectric layers are not displayed in the viewer, but they will be present in the exported ODB++ directory. Once the ODB++ database has been created, we can open the design in ANSYS IcePack. Open ANSYS IcePack and create a new project. Right-click on Model Create Object PCB to add a new PCB object to your IcePack model. Now open the Printed Circuit Boards dialog. Press the Geometry tab. There are several options here. The plane value lets you select the board's orientation. The starting and ending points here define where the PCB object will be placed in IcePack's coordinate system. When you import the ECAD design, these settings will be automatically updated. From the Import ECAD file option, select ODB++ Design from the Choose Type drop-down menu. Set the ODB++ archive type to Directory. Then navigate to the folder where the ODB++ directory exists. Right now, the PCB object is at the default location specified by these current values. This option repositions the PCB object to wherever the ECAD design is imported, or vice versa. Trace to Object imports the design to the current location of the PCB object. Object to Trace changes the position of the PCB object to the origin of the ECAT design. Trace Thickness Only resizes the PCB object to match the total thickness of the layers being imported. The object is resized in one direction only, in this case along Y. Trace Thickness and Bounding Box imports the traces with the bounding box and resizes the PCB object in all three, in other words X, Y, and Z, directions to conform to where the trace boundaries are. I'll go with the default. Press the Import button. The Board Layer and Via Information dialog appears. As expected, there are eight metal layers. The dielectric layers are also present. Solder mask and solder paste layers are ignored by ANSYS IcePack. This is because these layers have very little effect in a thermal simulation. As a general rule, only those layers that have appreciable impact in a thermal simulation are imported by IcePack. Be sure to verify the stack up data. The values of the thicknesses for the metal layers here are much too large compared to the dielectric layers. If you have access to the original design, you can verify this in the Cadence Stack Up Editor. It looks like the units may be wrong. To find out what's going on here, let's dig into the ODB directory. Open the attribute file for one of the metal layers. We see that the units are set to millimeters, but the copper weight is 45 as opposed to 0.045. So, it looks like the units for the metal layer thicknesses were inadvertently changed from microns to millimeters during the ODB++ export process. This problem can be fixed easily in IcePack by modifying the units of the metal layers, as shown here. Each layer in IcePack is modeled as a combination of metal and non-metal, so the traces on each metal layer are assigned pure copper, and the remaining part of that layer is modeled as FR4. The dielectric layers are modeled as FR4, except where the V is passed through them, and there copper is used. When the Fluent Solver in IcePack generates its mesh, it assigns every cell a different metal fraction. The metal fraction is used to compute the equivalent orthotropic thermal conductivity for every CFD cell. Click Done. The Objects Outside dialog appears. Press the Resize Cabinet button. The board appears in IcePack. Right-click Cabinet and select Auto Scale from the shortcut menu. Press Scale to fit. The DIM is now imported into IcePack. Again, bring up the Printed Circuit Boards window. 
click the Edit button of the Trace Layers and Vias option. The material assignments, layer thicknesses, and the layers themselves remain intact and they've been imported correctly. We see that the board has been translated from Cadence to Icepack through the ODB++ format successfully. You're now ready to use it for a thermal analysis. Thanks for watching.